This is the superlative Cruzador, previously known as the Infidel. And this is, unfortunately, a knife that is more um, form than function. Though the form is really, really cool. So this knife, previously known as the Infidel, um, now known as the Cruzador, is made by Superlative Knives. Superlative Knives is a relatively new knife company. They've probably been around two, three years that they really picked up in 2023. It's a combination between three well-known custom knife makers, Enrique Pena, Jared Oser, and Javi Garcia. This one really has a lot of Garcia's sort of edgy, futuristic, angular design language with parts of Oser in here as well. This knife, I, it's definitely made in China. I believe it is made by Riot. Most of the production work that Pena has been doing for years has been made by Riot. Riot has done slip joints for him before. It looks and feels like a Riot. I don't think that's been officially confirmed, but I'm pretty sure it's a Riot. This goes for $264 in this particular configuration. These are generally sold out most places you can get them. I think there's one or two places that have this in stock right now. It was available in this configuration here, which is a DLC bolster and this Dune um, fat carbon back here, which is just an overlay. You've got a full titanium, um, full titanium sort of frame here with just the fat carbon overlays. And then you've got a flush um, DLC backspacer here, your blade which has this really aggressive spear point pattern with a fuller and with a aggressive swedge cut into it is 137 thousandths of M4. Now, one thing we started to see in mid to late 2023 onward, and you know, we saw in early 2023, we saw Riot and a couple Chinese makers starting to move from M390 to S90V, which was a very welcome change. Now we have seen them start to use M4 which to me is yet another welcome change. Um, so very interesting tool steal on this one. And this knife was sort of described as a hard use slip joint, which is, and you know, the name, the Cruzador, the Infidel, and it's a lot of sort of what Superlative tends to do. Superlative does these very aggressively designed knives, often with very either futuristic or very sort of tactical, high speed, low drag overtones. Um, not even undertones, overtones. Again, that's a lot of Garcia's influence and parts of Oser's work really shining through. Um, and they look really cool. The problem comes when you start to actually use this guy. <laughs> so let's, let's get into the details here. I think I said $264, full retail. So blade here is very interesting. It's a blade grind like you probably haven't seen before. And honestly, everything that Superlative does is visually interesting. Every single one of their knives, with the possible exception of their first one, the Cannibal Front Flipper, looks like nothing else on the market. And I give them immense credit for that. That's hard to do today. What they did is they took relatively thick blade stock here, so 137 thousandths for a slip joint, and then put basically a huge flat on here. I mean, half of this relatively shallow blade is a flat. Then they put a really cool looking fuller in here. They blasted the inside of the fuller. Then they satined the flats. They took a swedge out of the front here. And you can see, I mean, not only is this, oh, did I take some of that tip off? Looks like I did. Um, not only is this stock thick, but that stock thickness, if you correct for the swedge, I mean, carries out its full stock thickness all the way out to here, and even toward the tip, it's still pretty darn thick. This is a thick blade, again, especially on a slip joint. This, put it this way, 137,000 stock, that is almost PM2 stock. If you put these next to each other, like, the PM2 is not that much thicker than the Cruzador, which is kind of ridiculous considering this is a slip joint. And then... They took this here, where about halfway down the blade, they put what looks to be and feels to be just a sort of full flat, well, not a full flat, but a flat grind with a belt satin on here. Now, this blade looks really cool. 
This is a very tough blade. And by the way, this tip, despite the fact that it's a relatively thick tip, just the way that this tip comes down with that swedge and all that, this is going to be a tip that pierces very nicely. And in my experience, this was nice to, you know, the nicest part of this blade was using this tip to cut in, to dig into things, to poke into things. This is a very pokey tip and it pokes very naturally out of this, what is actually a pretty neutral handle, though there are some really cool ergonomic details in here when you get closer. But the problem, when you start to look down this blade, yeah, you can see it even there. This thing is thick behind the edge. This thing just does not cut well. And the fact is, a, a lot of my knives, especially a lot of knives I'm going to review, I will use them both before and after I sharpen them because I don't want edge performance to determine too, factory edge performance to determine too much of my perception of that knife. But this guy, I mean, I didn't even bother resharpening because the blade geometry is so obviously fat and thick that I would have been surprised if this cut well, and I was not surprised. Um, this is, you know, if I just take this here, this, I mean, the edge itself is pretty fine. So meaning is, is pretty good. So it will cut something like paper. But the second that you try to use this for anything that passes through material, or the second you try to use this on anything where the edge really has to be sharp, whether it's cutting through tape or lighter, you know, plant materials, plant stems, stuff like that. Um, whether it's cutting through, you know, lighter twines, all that sort of stuff where you need your edge to be sharp, you need your edge to bite. This edge is not going to bite. This is just not a sharp blade. And you combine that with the fact that the stock gets very thick relatively quickly. And once you start to pass it through material, you feel that blade thickness. And so this, as much as I love looking at this knife while I'm using it, I don't like using it to cut. It's just too darn thick. Now they couldn't have really gotten the visual pop they're looking for here. And they couldn't have gotten the whole aesthetic they're looking for without making this thick stock. And honestly, I don't think anybody is looking at this knife, considering buying, or buying it and thinking, yes, that is a knife that is going to have the same utility as my Delica. That is why I want it. I want another Delica in my collection, so I'm going to get the Superlative Cruzador. No, nobody is doing that. What they are doing is they are, you are looking at this knife, you love the design, and you are wondering, does it cut well enough that I'm going to enjoy using this? And unfortunately, my verdict is not really. My verdict is yeah, probably if you really like this knife, you could lay that edge back aggressively and get some good cutting performance out of it. But I had low expectations and I was still disappointed with how well this cut. This thing was a bear to cut with. Um... And that remained, you know, as I used it. That remained for pretty much every task. The, the blade shape is not the problem. It's a pretty neutral traditional spear point. You got a nice, consistent belly. Um, it's easy to, you know, easy to pinch up on this blade. You got plenty of control over it. You can pinch up all the way like that when you need to. Get right to that edge. It's easy to use. But the blade design is not the problem, except to the extent that the blade design necessitates this relatively shallow flat grind which combined shallow flat grime, thicker stock, you know this is not going to be a great slicer. And it's just not. Even when I consider this is meant to be a harder use knife, there's still a level of performance. You know, if I think about it, my, my PM2 is a harder use knife. This thing still cuts well, even on lighter duty tasks. Just because the knife is harder use doesn't mean it should cut poorly. This knife just doesn't cut that well. It was a bit of a shame because I love the blade aesthetics. They're cool. They're not really my style, but they're cool. Um, actually, they kind of are my style. I could learn to love it. If I love the cutting performance, I would absolutely learn to love this style. It's certainly eye-catching, certainly fun. Oh, one other problem about the blade before I go onto the handle. So walk and talk. This is a relatively stiff pull. Um, I mean, about the same as my Jack Wolf knives or the Jack Wolf knife I used to have, um, especially on the clothes, it is a pretty stiff, 
pretty secure knife when it's open. So you can really push on this without too much worry about it closing on you. But there isn't really a great way to open this knife. You can use this fuller as a nail nick, but it's actually this fuller is a little bit shallow to be used well as a nail nick unless you grab all the way up here where you're so close to the pivot that you've got to pull like crazy. If you want to grab out here where you've got more leverage, you've got to try to get under the under the um, the swedge there. There's not really anything to grab on. You can get it if you pinch hard, but your fingers are going to slip off. So you've only so your only choices are to use this fuller as your nail nick, which isn't that great. It's not really grippy enough, or grip out here and try to get under the swedge, which is also not that great. And so even, you know, you can see it now, I regularly struggled to get this knife open, especially once my hands got even a little wet, a little dirty. There were a couple times that I almost gave up on getting this knife open, just because in ideal conditions it's tough. And then once things get even a little difficult, it, it just gets really, really hard to open um, in a way that actually detracts from its usability. So that's another mark against this blade, which really is just so much more form than function. Which brings us to the handle, which is cool and cool in some very subtle ways. So again, you've got a full titanium handle here with some uh, fat carbon overlays. And the way they've done this, it's actually a relatively neutral handle here. I mean, it's pretty much a straight line across the back with a kink here. But then what they've done is they've swept up here and then they've milled down on an angle from the fat carbon down to expose the titanium lining at the back. This actually leads to some very interesting ergonomic lines where this here ends up being sort of like a hyper chamfer, where as you wrap, you know, your this, this kink goes right into the middle of your palm. You got basically the equivalent of a little bit of belly here. Your first couple fingers are gonna fit nicely in the front of that little belly. Your third finger will go right in this crease here. And then as your pinky comes down on the back here, it actually very naturally curls around the titanium onto this lip of the fat carbon and then onto the surface of the carbon. And it feels really nice in the hand. This, this back in particular, while looking really cool, the way they cut it away actually has a bit of an ergonomic purpose. And this knife does feel very good in the hand. They put very broad chamfers on the edges of this knife, um, both the titanium and the fat carbon, which really do help round off that corner while still giving you sort of three points of purchase on the bottom, on the chamfer, and on the face. And it feels very secure in the hand. Just this handle, I quite like this handle. And there's, there are enough ergonomic curves here that even though the whole surface is pretty slick, you know, there's no texture on either the titanium or the carbon, it feels nice and secure. Um, there's not that much holding it in place, but, you know, considering the sort of stuff you're using your slip joint for, you can hold it back here and sort of, you know, uh, just, just, just hold it entirely by the blade, get your thumb up there. You can climb up a little bit more. You can pinch it. It's all very nice and natural. It's sort of like a neutral handle with a couple extra curves to hold in your hand. In particular, I mean, this little nook here really does help the ergonomic experience. You combine that with the fact that it is a handle that just doesn't look like much else out there. The way that they did this overlay, it's on inlay, it's an overlay, the way they machined all these edges, the way everything just has these huge, nice chamfers. By the way, it's a completely identical knife side to side, no clip on here. It's, it's a well-designed handle for the sort of knife this is being. Um, you know, I'm not sure it's a good enough, I'm not sure it's really a secure enough handle for hard use. Would I want to stab this into something or really, you know, work hard with this knife? Probably not. It's not really giving me enough purchase on my hands here. It's not like this back, it's not like the knife is canting downward or this back but is really keeping my hand in place. You know, I, I wouldn't love stabbing in with stuff because I'd be worried about my hands running up onto that blade a bit. Benefit is the blade's probably dull enough that I wouldn't necessarily cut myself. That's a bit of an exaggeration, but I felt I had to make that joke. It's, but it's a very good handle for the sort of lighter use you're going to use a slip joint for. And the fit and finish, which I've sort of referred to in general, is exactly what you expect from, again, this is probably Riot. 
which is everything is very flush, everything is very well done, all your surfaces are knocked down properly, everything is rounded properly, your DLC has a little bit of a stone wash on it, makes a bit of a black wash, your um, slip joint mechanism is flush in all three positions. Now I gotta open this thing again. Good walk and talk, nice snap. It's just, it's well executed, it's well done. The factory did what they needed to do, whoever that factory was. But where I end up with this knife is I didn't need a ton of use of this one to know that I wasn't going to love it. The design is very cool, the design is very unique. And for a lot of people, that design is going to be the reason to get this knife, especially if you're getting into higher end slip joints and you're not, you know, digging the sort of style that you get from somebody like a Jack Wolf knife. You don't want that more traditional style. You want something more modern, edgier. Um, you want something that just has more of its own design language. The Cruisador does a lot that nobody else on the market is doing, superlative is doing a lot that nobody else on the market is doing. But as a user, this just has too many issues. The blade is way too thick to really be useful. At least the combination of the blade and the grind make this way too thick behind the edge to really be useful. The blade is legitimately hard to open. There's no real good place to, to open it. Um, and I mean, actually those are really the big things. The handle is solid. It's solidly done, solidly executed, but it's not good enough to save the rest of the knife. Um, it's also, I mean, even though the design is cool, the design is interesting, the design isn't as exceptional. The, the selling point of this knife visually is really the blade, which, you know, almost has a cup, a little bit of sort of like a Derek Munro sort of look to it. The bl the handle is very cool. And even in some subtler ways, you know, again, this inlay, this overlay design is very clever, um, or at least it's very well executed here, very well integrated to the design philosophy. Oser, Osher's influence is well seen here. He does that sort of stuff really, really well. But the blade is the selling point here, and unfortunately the blade is the least functional point of this knife. Nothing in the execution that is bad, in the sense that the factory did what it was asked to do, but... If you're buying this knife, just know that you're buying it 100% for the aesthetics and that you're probably going to be a little frustrated when you actually go to use it. And at 264 bucks for a knife that is still, you know, 3.3 ounces, um, it's, not, it's not light, it's not exceptionally easy to carry or anything like that. And you know it comes with a nice, nice sheath, all that sort of stuff. They do, they do all that well. But at the price these guys are asking, it's just, it's hard for me to recommend, unless you really love this design. So that's my conclusion. The Superlative Cruisador. If you love the design, go for it. But know that you are buying this for the design and not for its utility, because in my experience, the utility just wasn't there. Hope you found this helpful. Um, if you got any questions, let me know down in the comments. If you would like me to review anything else, do let me know down in the comments. Um, love to get your feedback. Love to get more video ideas. Um, and I do try to respond to as many as I can. Hope you found this was a good use of your time. And I will see you again soon.